Hey guys, welcome to my video on measuring the stock of money, also called the money supply. We're going to talk about a couple of basic measures for how much money there is in an economy. And I'm going to talk about the U.S. money market especially. Uh, and I'm going to use real numbers from the year 2015. I know I could use more current numbers, but these are the ones in my book. And even if I use current ones, it would probably change by the time you've read the video or watched the video. So deal with it. We got two measures of money that we're going to talk about today. The M1 and the M2. These different measures of money are different ways of talking about the money supply. And what we're going to find is that M1 is the most liquid and M2 is a little less liquid but still pretty dang liquid. I'll just write liquid. If it's not liquid, it's not money. So I'm not saying it's like hard to exchange this stuff for money, but I'm just saying M1 is more readily usable. So I'm gonna draw an egg here. Why would I draw an egg? Here's the yolk, and here's the outline for the white part. M1 is gonna be our yolk. It's the stuff in the middle, because M2 is going to include M1 and then some. M1 is full of currency, now, when I say currency, I want to point out, I'm talking about currency in circulation. So money sitting in a bank vault doesn't count. It has to be money that's out and about in the economy. Currency and transaction deposits, which include things like checking accounts, where you put your money into it and it's immediately usable as cash. So there's your M1, currency and checking accounts and other transaction deposits. What's M2? M2 is equal to M1 plus savings deposits or savings accounts, time deposits, and retail money market funds. By adding these three other things to the M1, I've added stuff that can be very, very quickly converted to transaction ready cash but they're not quite ready yet so these are measures of how much money is almost instantly available and so by adding them to m1 i get m2 which is still liquid just not quite as perfectly liquid as cash and checking accounts so to give you some ideas in 2015 in the united states the m1 had, had approximately 1.3 trillion dollars in currency and approximately 1.7 trillion dollars in transaction deposits totaling for it was about three trillion and change three point something trillion dollars now what about the m2 the m2 included the m1 which was about three trillion dollars it also included savings deposits, which were about $8 trillion. It also included time deposits at about $0.4 trillion, at approximately $0.5 trillion, and money market funds at approximately $0.6 trillion. And the result is that for the M2, it ended up being about 12 Point two trillion dollars. So we shouldn't be surprised to see that the M2 is bigger than the M1 because it includes more kinds of money. Lessons aside, those are the basic definitions. The M1 is a piece of the M2. Everything that's in M1 is in M2. M2 is just also a little bit more. So I hope this was helpful to you guys. If not, you know, too bad you watched it anyway. But thanks for watching. Good luck and happy econing.